You've got to be willing to stay focused, to be creative, to be relentless, because things are going to happen to you when you're working on your dream, when you get on track. I remember when I first got involved in speaking, one of the main things that speakers like to do is speak to, speak to a certain association that they have over 10,000 of their sales reps that come to this convention. And I was relentless. I kept saying, it's possible. It's possible. See, what I want to let you know and set you up for, because you said it's possible, don't mean that you're not going to have any problems. <laughs> that Murphy's Law ain't going to come and slap you side the head. <laughs> Old Murphy going to come visit you. He's waiting for some of y'all out in the parking lot. <laughs> oh, you say it's possible. Okay, it's possible. You better get up. <laughs> well, I was working. I kept saying it's possible. They got other speakers on this program. I can be on that program too. I kept selling myself. I got all fired up. And I was calling them every day, every day. And the lady finally said, Mr. Brown, I tell you what, we want you to come in and talk to our sales executives. You got the kind of fire and guts that they want that will motivate them. And let me tell you something else. We want you to bring your motivational tapes. You're going to need at least $50,000 worth of tapes. I said, is that right? Yes, because they want to keep that drive alive. I said, all right. I called the guy to duplicate my tapes. I said, Don, how you doing? This is Les. Let me tell you, I got a major speaking engagement. I said, man, it's a speaker's dream. I need over $50,000 worth of product. He said, Les, you don't have that kind of credit. <laughs> I said, I know, but Don, I can sell that. Just, just right after speaking engagement, I'll give you money in four days. He said, are you sure, Les? I said, yes, man, I got a major speaking engagement, and they told me to do it. He said, man, that, that's a big art. Let me talk with the lady with you. I said, hold on just a minute, man. Call the lady back. Hello, Evelyn, how you doing? This is Les Brown. I got Don on the phone. What did you say? Do I have the speaking engagement? Yes, you do. And, and what else you suggest? Les, our, our people, they buy a lot of tapes. Your tapes are very popular among them. I'm saying bring at least $50,000 worth of tapes, Les. You'll sell everything you got and more. I said, did you hear that, Don? He said, yes. I said, now, if anybody else has to make a decision, are you the final person? She said, I'm the final person. I will send you the contract. I want you. I said, you hear that, Don? He said, yes. I said, oh, ye of little faith. I said, duplicate the tapes, man. Hunk the photo. Well, he duplicated the tapes. One week came by. I'm checking the mail every day. No contract. I said, come on, Murphy, don't start nothing, man. Come on. <laughs> come on, man, give me a break. Come on, now, you know. This ain't fair. Come on, man. Give you more a break. Come on. I talked to myself, you know. I didn't want to call him right then. Two weeks passed by. Murphy said, don't you think you ought to call him? <laughs> I said, okay. I called. I said, hello, um, this is Les Brown calling. How you doing, Les? I said, fine. I said, um, Evelyn hasn't sent my contract out yet. Any additional information you need? So, Les, you haven't heard? I said, no. I said, Evelyn died. I said, she died? I said, did she say anything about me? When I got home, I was so wiped out. And Murphy was in the house waiting on me. <laughs> Murphy said, is it possible you want to listen to some of your tapes? <laughs> but ladies and gentlemen, here's what I had to do. I had to begin to focus on what was the solution. Now, this was not the only place that I'll be able to sell those products. And as I began to challenge myself and got some help and support and some other input, I eventually did. It took longer, but it was challenging. But I did it. Repeat after me, please. No matter how bad it is, or how bad it gets, I'm going to make it. I'm going to make it. Shake somebody's hand on your right and left and say, you got that right. Yeah. <laughs> Repeat after me, please. It's possible. It's possible. I can have my dream. 
I can get what I want. I, what I, want. I, must, be I must be creative and never give up. Now, let me share something else with you, ladies and gentlemen. When you know within yourself that there's something you want to do, and I believe that all of us were born with a purpose, that all of us have something that we are supposed to do, that all of us have some goodness within us, and that goodness gives us a responsibility to manifest our greatness. And when you know that, you can feel it in your guts, and you know that you're deliberately operating below your potential, you've gotten comfortable, you stop expanding, you stop stretching, you stop challenging yourself. Let me share something else with you. Not only is it possible for you to have your dream, but it's necessary. It's necessary that you have it, that you work on it, that you develop yourself, that you go for what is yours in the universe. I have a friend that at the beginning of the year I was in Los Angeles giving a speech and and I do a seminar teaching people how to become involved in the speaking business and, and also one called Speaking with Power, teaching people how to begin to develop their communication skills. And this friend, I said, I want you to work with me. I called her up. She said, Les, are you sure I can do it? Sure you can. You have a PhD in communications. I don't have that. If I can do it, sure you can do it. In fact, I'm going to give you the support that you need. Here's what I realized, ladies and gentlemen. We only have enough energy to take us to a certain level, but it's necessary that we assemble ourselves with other people who share our vision, other people that can see it for us, to give ourselves a home court advantage. So it's necessary that you seek out other people who think like you who are growing, who have decided that they are not satisfied with where they are. Necessity, in my opinion, is not the mother of invention. Refusing to accept things the way that they are is the mother of invention. When you decide, I'm not going to settle for this. This is not going to be it for my life. I deserve more than this. See, that will start making you do some stuff. See, a lot of people go to work every day miserable, and all they do is just talk about how miserable they are. But they don't do anything about it. So I was telling her that I knew she hated a job with a passion. I said, you can do this. you got more going for you than I have going for me. And we've been going through this for years, ladies and gentlemen. She'd been to my seminar speaking for a living. She brought her husband, and that was one of the major problems that I realized that happened in her life. He couldn't see it for her. So you've got to make sure that you have people in your life that can see it for you, that will encourage you. Non-affirming relationships can hurt you. And I talked to him. I said, you know, I don't have anything to do with, with your marriage. He said, you and I are good friends, and she and I are good friends. And, and I'm not taking sides. I said, but if you can't see it for it, don't tell her that. Just give her some support. What if you're wrong? It's possible, man, that, that if, if I'm doing it, she can do it. Well, you're different. How are you going to tell me that? You've seen her speak. She's got great speaking skills. Don't underestimate her. You don't know. You've got a great woman here. But you see, people who can't see it for themselves, can't see it for you. He was happy. So I said, will you do it with me? I said, I'm going to give you the support you need. You can't do it by yourself. I will stand with you. She said, you will? I said, yes. I'm going to make you part of my seminar. You'll do a part of it and I'll do a part of it. Speaking with power. She said, okay. Three days later, ladies and gentlemen, I got an emergency call at my office. It was from a husband. He called and said, tell Les Brown that Marion is dead. I said, oh no. When I was flying there to go to the funeral, and I remember the last time that I saw her, and I had some of her papers that I had gotten inadvertently confused with mine, and I took them home. And I was searching through these papers to do one of her works. She was a prolific writer. And what got me, what was so sad that made me begin to cry, was that there were poems that she had started that were profound poems, great thoughts, that she didn't complete. 
plays that she had started that she didn't complete. See, that poem was given to her. I can't finish that for her, nor can you. That play, whatever the outcome that she had envisioned, that she had imagined, was given to her. Only her. And that, she's the channel that that was going to come through. You are here, and you are the vessel, you are the outlet for the universe, that you've been selected. There's something for you to do. I believe all of us have some purpose for being here. And as I was going to the funeral, and I was reading a newspaper that said that, that millions of people are dying because of, of what they're eating, talking about their diet. And I'm sure that it, it was Marion talking to me, whispering, saying, Les, the next time you speak, say that even more are dying because of what's eating them. When the challenges of life come your way, you've got to find ways to increase your sense of self-appreciation because if you don't, you're bombarded with negative stuff every day that beats you down and you will find yourself unconsciously engaged in self-destructive behavior. If you don't program yourself, life will program you.